everybody welcome back to the channel so great to have you here as always so i'm back in the same place i was last week however this time i've driven in and parked up at the church here saint peter's and i managed to get the last space it's a little bit limited here to park actually and it's the main reason why i got the um, the boat last week gonna be hitting five wainwrights today so let's go and have a look at the map and see exactly which ones those are from the church, we're going to head back down towards Howe Town and a place called Melgards. From there, it's a steep pull up to Bonscale Pike, where we'll be able to check out some amazing views of Ulls Water. Then across to Arthur's Pike. And at this point, we're going to leave the views behind for a little bit and a gentle, steady away climb up to Lord Pot Hill. Then over to Weather Hill, at which point. I'll be dropping back down towards the head of Fusedale and then over to Steel Knots and Paikawasa and then finally dropping down to the church and the vein. So that is the route today. Uh, it's a completely alien route to me. I've never done this before and I'm very excited about it. Like I've mentioned before on, on previous videos, I've overlooked quite a lot of fells uh, in the past because they've just not been that dramatic or exciting or what have you but I am actually really excited about today's walk so I'll stop waffling I'm gonna get down this path here head down towards Howe Town and then figure out the route from there up onto uh, Bond Scale so let's go that is a really really gorgeous view to be walking towards the lake this morning has a drove past it was like a mill pond it was like a mirror absolutely gorgeous i saw a couple of photographers out there and getting some shots and i must admit i was a little bit jealous <laughs> i can kind of see where i'm going today the first part of today anyway so i can see the path obviously going down here and winding along and then i can just just and so make out a bit of a path going up to bond scale there so that looks pretty straightforward but that climb up will uh, definitely get the blood pumping and get me warmed up a little bit because it is quite nippy this morning so across the way there you can see Hallian Fell that's where I was last week walked up from the lake there and then up to about this point by the church if you remember and then up the back side there literally within a couple of minutes Hallian has clagged in at the top there I think it's going to be one of those days, you know, it's going to be a day of changeable weather. Forecast is meant to be dry. <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. And it's supposed to be quite cold with patches of sunlight and that kind of stuff. So potentially nice for photographs. It seems quite thick at the moment, the cloud. So we'll see. We'll see about that. It's not about that, is it? It's about the views, but it's not necessarily about the photographs. That's a bonus if I can get any beautiful isn't it isn't it absolutely gorgeous around here look at it <laughs> i think it's my new favorite place or oh, one of them <laughs> one of the many now you might be able to see as we go around this bend a faint grassy squiggle going up the fell there that's where i need to be that's the point i'll be going up i just flipping love it i really do <laughs> look i mean look Not herdies. You can't have everything, but you know. Swaleys will do. Hey, Swaley. It's funny actually, because that last walk I didn't see a single herdy. Otherwise I would have, you know, greeted them in the, the usual manner. But there wasn't any. So this is the first glimpse we get of Fusedale itself. Or Fusedale. Okay, a footpath branches off here let's have a look a little footbridge yep there we go so this is Fusedale Beck very nice little Beck lovely what a view this is look at it a little bit of blue sky above as well which is obviously a good thing maybe Okay, this is Melgard, so just pass through the gate there. And the path up to the hill is about, I'm gonna say 100 meters down here. 
I mean, that was just a little glance at the, the map, so I might be completely out there, but I think it's about that. A little bit nervous because I'm not feeling particularly strong today uh, or fit, but shut up, man up, and just get up there. Okay, it's definitely less than 100 meters. It's probably more like 50 meters, perhaps. But opposite this little gate here is this not very inviting looking soggy path. I think it gets a little bit better further up. But certainly this beginning section looks a little bit wet and soggy underfoot. Ooh. <laughs> Damn it! Ooh. This is quite brutal actually. <laughs> Just having a little bit of a breather halfway up and turning back to look at that view. Definitely worth doing. Look at it. My goodness. And the lake is like glass. There's the steamboat that I took last week. And it's around about 20 past 10, which is the time that it gets here, the first boat of the day. Yeah, so I was on that one, that exact one last week. Some beautiful light out towards place fell. It's gone now, but I'll put it on the screen what I was just seeing a minute ago. Some beautiful light coming in from the uh, southeast. Gorgeous lighting up exactly where it was last week as well. Yeah, and you can see the night as well. It's got a little bit of light just beneath it. Beautiful light everywhere. And this is Little Mel Fell with a little bit of sunlight on it as well. However, I've just clocked behind me and the rest of the route and it's all clagged in. <laughs> I'm not too worried because that can change, you know, it's... Uh, I think it is going to be a bit of a changeable day today. However, if you are familiar with Wayne Wright's books, he says for these particular hills, uh, you know, Arthur Pike, Arthur's Pike and then um, over to Lord Pot Hill and Weather Hill, not to do it on a misty day. In fact, his words were, it's a nightmare. So, <laughs> yeah, it'll be right. So I'm going to get on a bit further up. It levels off in a second, just about here. However, it does get steep again as across the front of Swarth Fell. But yeah, great view, isn't it? Look at that. What an outstanding view and route this is already. This is nasty. Pretty steep path, I must admit. I'm just glad it zigzags across the hillside otherwise be very very steep wow that is looking really good out towards well i guess that is gray gray crag that sort of way hat top dodd perhaps it's difficult to tell from this angle and zigzag we go up into this groove but not forgetting to have a look back looking a bit gloomy Shame. Okay, I've just got to the bit where, well, the steep bit's done, thank goodness, and it's levelling off, heading up towards Bonscale Pike now. But I hope you can see that. Look at the light down there. It's absolutely stunning, and it's all starting to peel back the clouds a little bit, or certainly gaps anyway. This is the stuff I really like. I'm going to get some shots here if I can and then push on up to Bond Scale and go and check out the views from there. Because I think once I get to Bond Scale, the ground is going to be in the way and I won't be able to get these shots. It's quite nice with a zigzaggy road there. It'd be nice if I got a bit of light on it, but probably unlikely. Right, let's stop talking because the light's going. <laughs> and that little farm lit up down there. That is so nice. Let's just spin around to Hallin Fell. That's looking lovely as well, lit up a little bit. And let's just move across to Steel Knots. Sorry, it's going to focus. Steel Knots here. There's Bakawasa. Sounds Japanese now. <laughs> and then just a whole lot of interesting misty mountains. All right, I think the universe is trying to tell me, get a flip and move on. All this cloud has just come up from all's water and pretty much obscured that view, which is a real shame because there's a little bit of a light show going on there. However, 
I do think I got a few shots, so we'll see. I don't think I'll put them on the end of these videos. I don't think anybody's that interested. So what I'll do is I'll just put them on Instagram and on my website to buy as and when I get around to sorting them out. <laughs> For me, it takes ages to sort through photographs. And when I put the pictures on the end of the videos, it does feel like I'm a little bit rushed. And I'm putting, I'm putting pictures on that I'm not really that happy with. Uh, just any old thing, and I, I need to stop that. I have to warn you, it's very likely that I might lose my head today. Look at it! Look at that light! Look at Hallin Fell. Oh! <sighs> it's just great. The, the light is just amazing. I don't know if it's coming through on this, this camera. It's because the sun's so low in the sky. It's a soft light. And there's lots of them spitting everywhere. <laughs> it's a soft light. And you get in the longer shadows as well, which just makes it a much more interesting looking view. Okay, I mean, this is a lovely path. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It's heading over to Bonscale Tower now, which is like a little bit of a pile of stones. And it is very nice. It is beautiful. However, kind of missing that. <laughs> That's really the star of the show at the moment. But I do need to stay focused and get on to Bond scale. It is nice, actually. It is really nice up here. I like all these little sort of lumps of um, grass and rock and, and all sorts. Quite interesting, actually. Views from Bond scale Pike. That's pretty good, isn't it? I'm going to go down here, actually. This looks quite interesting. Hello. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Oh, wow. This has to be one of the best views I've ever seen in the Lake District. Absolutely outstanding. And I know that's saying something because, well, we all know there's some amazing views, but again, imagine this in winter. <laughs> wow. Let's go and have a look at the Bond Scale Tower. I think I can see it from here, actually. I think it's just over there along this little trod. Let's go and check it out. Yeah, that's it down there, look, just here. Bit of an odd place for a, a cairn or a structure, because it's not on the top. And just as Wainwright mentions in his book, there's a really well-made one, and a really crudely made one just above it. Let's go and have a look at both of them. Oh, that one's got a bit of a lean on. The Leaning Tower of Bonscale. Okay, let's go and have a look at the proper one first. Oh, that's nice. That is really nice. But, you kind of see why people... Well, someone built this, because look at the flipping view. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Let's have a look at the next one. And here is the slightly ropier one. It's still pretty good, though. So, I must admit, I am kind of struggling a little bit today to pull myself away from that view. <laughs> It is a bit of a problem, and it is slowing me down for sure. But I'm going to have to drag myself away from that now and head over towards Arthur's Pike. Not that looking forward to it, really. It just looks a bit boring. <laughs> it really does look boring. Uh, but I've got to go, because that is the most northern reach of High Street, you know, the old Roman road. So it's definitely worth having a look at and uh, seeing what it's like on the other side of that drop out towards Penrith. Uh, just kind of make out Penrith now. Oh, this low sun is lovely. It really is quite special. So you can actually see my path ahead, cutting across the fell side there, and then up, not into the sky, obviously. <laughs> okay, this is Swarthbeck. Is this going to be a bit slippy? Let's have a look. A bit wobbly, no, that's fine. And straight across to there. That's a lovely view down there towards the lake. Looking down Swarthbeck. Very nice. Again, it might just be the light because, you know, Great Mel Fell is really lit up there. Little Mel Fell in the shade. Beautiful. 
Okay, so this lady and the dog have taken the lower path. I'm going to go along that higher one there. I can think of far worse places to be walking right now. Wonderful. So as I approach Arthur's Pike, looking due south, it's looking a bit nasty, like it's going to rain. Okay, I'm just above Winnie Crag, and this is one of the cairns that's marked on the map. Yeah, it's not a bad looking structure that actually, someone's made a bit of an effort. <laughs> it's amazing how many properly built cairns there are around here, you know, proper structures, not just the usual pile of stones you'll see as way markers on a route, like that one for example, and Bonscale Tower and its cheap imitation replica. <laughs> now I need to be that way more, quite far off the summit at the moment, we're well, down from it. So I'm going to head off to the summit here. I think that's when the views are going to probably stop. The views are best here because we're right on the edge of the hill. Ooh, more peoples. All right, it's not a very long walk from the top of Winnie Crag there at all until you get to um, Arthur's Pike. Just two minutes of a stroll and I've picked up some traffic. I probably won't talk now, because I'm a little bit shy in front of other people. You just look a bit of a weirdo, don't you, talking to yourself and a camera. Oh, it's doggy heaven up here. Hello. Hello, little dog. Ooh, don't bite me. Oh, that's it, they're always playing now. Got a little bit busy then, <laughs> a little bit crazy on the summit. So I've moved off and heading along what I hope is the path up to Lord Pot Hill. Not really much of one, I must admit. Quite difficult to uh, navigate on this ground if you're not careful, but I can see the path way ahead up that way. So I'm going to try and thread my way over the fell side to pick it up. So we'll see. Yes, a lot of paths crisscrossing around this point. I think Wainwright was absolutely right about being very careful coming on here in the mist. But as you can see now, because, you know, I was flipping lucky, <laughs> I'm now on this rutted track that will take me up onto um, Lord Pot. Now, this is part of High Street. You know, this is the old Roman road. Quite a historic bit of road, this. Nice little bit of light display ahead. A little bit of shaftage. So I've got about two and a half kilometers to walk now to Lord Pot Hill. And you can actually see Lord Pot Hill uh, just there at the top of it. And I think in the valley down there where I was, I think there's light kicking off and I think it's looking amazing. And I can't see it. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys something. I get quite a lot of messages you know, comments on the videos, emails, direct messages, that kind of stuff on Instagram, from people saying that the channel's been a real inspiration for them to get out walking or get out, you know, photographing, that kind of stuff. And I've had some really, really lovely messages of people who are, you know, recovering from illness or just weren't even that into walking at all, but they've watched the channel and have been inspired to get out and literally just changed their lives and, and they, they feel like they have changed their lives. They've told me that the channel's inspired them, that I've inspired them. And I'm going to tell you now, I, th that is a real struggle for me. I can't get my head around that and it feels weird because I'm, you know, just an ordinary bloke. <laughs> and, I, and it's a little bit embarrassing. But where I'm going with this is I just want to say that although I might be inspiring you, you are really inspiring me, all of you. Believe me when I say there's been a lot of times where I've just been like, I've had enough. I can't do this. You know, I'm not getting anywhere. The channel's not getting anywhere. You know, I'm wasting my time. And I'll get these, these just lovely messages. And that just makes it all worthwhile. It really does. Even if it's just a handful of you who have getting a lot from these videos and getting that drive to to get out into nature or even just pick up a camera. Huge amount of inspiration for me to continue getting out. So you lot 
a massive inspiration to me. So for that, thank you very much. I do really appreciate all of you. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love bleak places. And this is a bleak place. It's just up moorland, you know, and pretty featureless. The kind of place you would get lost in the mist and would be a nightmare, as Wainwright mentioned. But I like it. I like getting lost in the mist as well. I think there's some kind of a micro light or something flying up there. I can't see it though, man. Honestly, my eyes are so bad. You could probably see it, but wait until it gets a bit closer. So, yeah, it doesn't take long to get over to Lord Pot Hill, really. It's just up here. And it's a very, very easy walk. This is nice and soft underfoot along this track. Oh, it's one of those um, gyrocopters. You probably can't even see it, can you? <laughs> Helicopters, gyrocopters, they all look a little bit scary to me. It's a lot of moving parts spinning around. <laughs> Oh, it's looking lovely out towards the night. I'm going to take a picture of the night now. I really wish I was on um, where I was before on Bond Scale because that's looking really nice. Seems to be lifting up a little bit now, the cloud. I'm too far away from it. It's a real shame. So I'm going to keep on pushing on actually to, to uh, Lord Pot Hill. Bleak. <laughs> but beautiful. Oh, wait a second. We've got a little bit of snow falling. This little tiny... Ooh, interesting. <laughs> well, there's a few more flakes coming down now. Could this be the beginning of a proper white winter? Wouldn't that be fantastic? I really hope that happens this year, because it'd be wonderful to, to film these videos in the snow on those crazy snowy days. Okay, just getting up to the top now. It's only taken God knows how many hours to get here. <laughs> and there's a few more people turning up at exactly the same time from a different direction. Hi, how are you doing? Alrighty, flip. Nice. So they're going off that way. I think I'll be going off in that direction or maybe that direction where they came from. I need to check the map. I suspect it is that direction. Right, that was a real flurry of snow then. And typically now I've got all my gear on and put my little waterproof jacket on the camera and change microphones and all that kind of stuff. It stopped. <laughs> so I didn't actually film the best part of the day. That's just typical, isn't it? Oh, it was really coming down quite strong then, actually. Quite hard. Loads of people, in fact, you can see it sort of in the distance. Big cloud of it's moved off. I doubt that's the last of it today. In fact, you can see it ahead on the route there, over on Weather Hill, or beyond Weather Hill, on High Street, in fact. So I'm gonna head off now to the lodge somewhere. There's an old hunting lodge here. The chimney and the fireplace and everything's still there, because that's stone. But the original structure, if you read Wainwright's book, he mentions it in there, was wood. Looking really nice out there towards the nab. That again, once again, is very Heat and Cooper-esque. I've just put my flipping camera away as well, you know. You know what? I think this is the, the lodge. And what's left of it? It can't be. Is it? <laughs> Let's have a look. Is that like a fireplace to you? No, that's a shelter. That's definitely not a fireplace. Oh, it could be. I don't know. Well, there's an incredible light show going on over there at the moment on the nab. Let me show you. It's looking lovely. Rest Dodd on the left there and then over to the nab. I really do not want to be here right now. I want to be over on steel knots right this minute because that's where it's all kicking off. Incredible view. Actually, it's kicking off here. I'm getting some good views here. I need to stop mourning because that is absolutely stunning. Watching the crepuscular rays uh, hitting the various little lumps and bumps there in the valley. But there's all this land and ground in the way. I need to get, 
get this gone and out of the way. So I'm gonna push on to Weather Hill and get to the point where I drop down, heading back towards uh, Steel Knots. Honestly, as boring as this fell is, and it really is boring, <laughs> but enjoyable, but you know, quite boring. It's a fantastic viewing gallery for the less boring fell, shall we say. It really is a great place to come and stand and look back into the park and get these incredible views. Alrighty, here we are on the summit of the penultimate Wainwright of the day, Weather Hill. The obviously just couldn't be bothered. Did all the work at Bond Scale, Bond Scale Tower and Arthur's Pike and whatever you got to hear. Yeah, forget it, a few pallet storms, that'll do. <laughs> and to be fair, that's what it's worth. It's a rubbish hill. It's a rubbish hill though, with a flipping amazing view. It really is incredible. And made more so by this unbelievable light at the moment. I mean, look at it out towards the nab. I just love it. God, it's just amazing. And there's light down there as well, just, oh, it's just crazy. It's just driving me nuts, honestly. <laughs> Nearly done now, really, sort of, along this ridge anyway. So from the summit, I'm just gonna head over to this sort of south top, I guess. A little bit of a depression here, goes back up to a similar elevation as this. And at that point, that's when I start to drop off towards Steel Knot. That is looking pretty special, isn't it? Look at it out there. My goodness, beautiful. Right, I'm now heading down towards the head of Fusedale and Brownfoot Crag, which is the first lump we'll get to on the uh, the ridge that takes us up to Steel Knot. There's a nice little dilapidated barn down there that keeps getting sunlight on it, so I might try and get a shot of that as well. But Okay, it's pretty steep along here. Um, I don't think it looks that steep on the camera, but believe me, this is pretty steep ground. There we go. What an absolutely beautiful afternoon it's turning out to be. Looking out towards the south there, quite a bit of sun coming down, and uh, just gorgeous. The light is just amazing, it really is, and you might be able to see it in this camera, I don't know, there's a rainbow over there. Just a loud one. Gorgeous! I like this area, I really do. I think Knowles Hill's a bit boring, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna kind of, you know, give any kind of falsehoods or false hope or anything like that. Those hills are, are boring, but the views, my goodness. I've had a marsh bar, can you tell? Let's get down to this um, little building here. A few remains here, by the looks of it. And I think there's one here, another one there. Wow, look at the light over there, flipping. <laughs> I'm just trying to pretend it's not there. <laughs> I can't see it. It got really hot, by the way, flipping it. I'm at the point now where I really should be disrobing because it's not long, no longer windy, but I just can't be bothered to take my bag off and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, how cool are these? Let's go and have a quick shufty round this big one. someone to be in here, a body or something. Through the door, I'm not gonna fit through that. <laughs> Gotta get Gigantor through. Cool. That was a struggle. Lovely though, isn't it? Imagine living here. I'll tell you what I could, I could easily live here with that view. <sighs> you could definitely come here in the right conditions and get some good shots. I mean, just that alone is a great shot. I just not got the right lens with me today, really. More excuses, but it is true. Okay, let's get on uh, through the wall and onto Brownfoot Crag. Uh, which side, which side? Ooh, it's a little bit squidgy around here. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that out instead. I ain't got any strength at the moment. Ooh, now this is, this is potentially 
potentially a nightmare. Ugh. Okay, ouch, it's trapped my foot, that locked, all done. Look at this, honestly. <laughs> this here is just a very, very deep bog. Lovely. That is really, really beautiful light, isn't it, along that fence? Before I started this walk, I was a bit worried about the drop down from Weather Hill and the walk back up towards Brownfoot and then Steel Knots. But actually, you don't drop down that far. Not really. Oh, look at it. You don't, it's not a massive drop. It's not like you're losing all your height. The walk back up here, the walk back up here isn't, isn't too arduous at all, to be honest with you. Okay, I kind of miscalculated this bit. <laughs> There's quite a bit of drop down from Brownthick Crag. I reckon 10 minutes and I'll be the top of there. And then that's when I'm hoping that all this gloom that we can see at the moment is gonna disappear and I'll get some epic sunset god light. It's about 200 meters away actually, not far at all. Looks a little bit like um, Lindisfarne from this angle. This is a very, very straightforward path up. Not difficult at all. Just approaching the summit now. Oh, that's nice. Flip a neck. That's a hell of a view. Get to the very Pike of the Pikeawasa. Here it is. This is Pikeawasa. This is a big lump of rock. I mean, it is a peak, I suppose, but you know. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang around here for a little bit, have a marsh bar, of course, <laughs> and just see what happens with this light. I mean, it's kind of clouding up a little bit, definitely thickening up now. It's worth hanging around. You just never know. The sun might drop right down betwixt the clouds and the fell side there, which would give some pretty amazing light in all directions, so it's, it's worth it. So yeah, marsh bar time and chill. <laughs> done this walk relying on going back on the steamboat I would have missed it because I'd still be here <laughs> or I wouldn't I would have made it and it just wouldn't have been a, a very very enjoyable day or certainly not as enjoyable as it's been so far wow it's so nice not having a rush you know just take the time off the hill I don't think anything's gonna happen well I don't know the sun has obviously been dropping but there's a, a bank of clouds that have tracked it as well gone along with it and just hidden it all the way along so i don't know we've probably got another half an hour or so until sunset it's a real shame because had i been here half an hour earlier i would have been in a great spot to get all that light that i saw you know when i was down by the disused building down there never mind doesn't matter i mean it's not like i've not had a great day and not had any views and not managed to get any good photographs i think i've got some nice ones so i'm not grumbling at all it's just like normal i want everything <laughs> I want it all. I want it now. Right, I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm going to go because it 
just everything everywhere you look it's flat there's nothing going on so i'm going to head off and then i'm going to go to Pooley bridge so back along the lake uh, and into one of the pubs there either the crown or the sun okay so i've packed up and setting off a long steel knot now where i'll drop down towards a place called Berkey knot and that'll um bring me right in by the church actually okay this little novel here actually marked on the map as a little ring contour i'm hoping once i get to the top of it i can see a path that will drop down to the church okay that's I can see a few paths off. It's going to be steep. It's going to be a very rapid descent. But I can definitely see some little paths winding around there. That's Howland Fell right in front. You can see the obelisk and you can see the big green path that I came down last week as well. Which means the seal's water. And we're going to see the church. There it is. A few of you asked me on the last video what these pants are that I'm wearing, these trousers. They are the Revolution Race. Thingy me jiggy, what do you call it? I can't remember what model they were. I'll put it in the links in the description. I wasn't too sure at first of Revolution Race themselves and, and the, the, the trousers. And I just kind of held off. I didn't buy any. I stuck to my Montaigne and my Rab, which I love, by the way. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to give them a go. I like the look of them. I'm going to give them a go. They got pretty good reviews. And uh, I'll just wear them for walking fin and that kind of stuff. Just dossing about. I'll tell you what, these have become my go-to trousers now. I wear them all the time. All the time. On all these walks. And any other walks, they're flipping brilliant. They've got all the stretchy bits where they should be. They've got all proper ruggedy stiff bits where it should be. They're quick drying, they're warm. What more do you want? That's, that's all you want, isn't it, really, from a pair of trousers? This isn't an advert, by the way. I'm, they don't give a stuff about me. I really like them a lot, and I think I'll be getting another pair. I might get a few pairs, actually, different colours. Okay, here we are. Just getting back to the church in Martindale. Van's just down here. So I've got a wee drive into the... Uh, the village of Pooley Bridge and pub. So let's go. Cool. 